Hey guys, I watched a bunch of movies again, but I'm here to talk about three of them. I saw Three from Hell. I like Rob Zombie an awful lot, and I watch all of his movies. I'm not sure why, most of them are terrible, and I don't think he's a very good director. I guess I just appreciate his love for horror, even if his ideas rarely make for a successful film. I mean, honestly, the only two movies of his that I like are House of a Thousand Corpses, which is alright, and The Devil's Rejects, his only good film in my opinion. Those movies are less about their basic, borrowed stories, and more about the incredibly entertaining, memorable characters that get into devilish shenanigans. Three from Hell is the trilogy film of the series, and unfortunately, it feels like the afterthought that it is. I mean, the Firefly family died at the end of Rejects. This movie wasn't supposed to exist. The gang kinda just runs around doing more evil things, hiding from the cops, killing people, and having sibling rivalries like they did in Rejects. A handful of scenes are near-carbon copies. The perfect level of overacting that you should be expecting is front and center with Sherry Moon Zombie as Baby being as maniacal and charismatic as ever. The addition of Richard Brake, a man that fits perfectly into this style of film, is wasted because his character has no personality aside from being another crazy dude. The film is running on nostalgia and old ideas and while it's watchable, it's pretty disappointing and easily the worst of the three. 4 out of 10. Is Joker the best movie of the year? I don't think it is, but I liked it. You guys know I'm not much of a superhero fan, but this is a different kind of superhero flick. It's a character study, one of my favorite genres, starring Joaquin Phoenix, one of my favorite actors. Obviously, there was a lot to enjoy from his performance. Phoenix does crazy very well. His involuntary, painful laughs, his awkward movements, his dead stare. It was a top-notch depiction of an iconic character, and I wouldn't be upset if he got recognition come Oscar season. But the story story is, it's just Taxi Driver. It's the king of comedy. It also shares a lot of similarities with last year's You Were Never Really Here, a better character study starring, yeah, Joaquin Phoenix. I understand that's a coincidence, but the Scorsese borrowing was very intentional. It's the character of the Joker put into scripts from better films. Don't get me wrong, this in no way ruins the movie, but I'm big on originality and it's hard for me to overlook several story issues on top of that, including some Wayne family stuff that didn't really do it for me, and some dumbed-down writing. It's still much better than I was expecting. The direction is mostly well done, it looks good, it flows nicely, but let's be real, this is the Joaquin Phoenix show, and it excels at that. 7 out of 10. And then yesterday, I watched The Gemini Man in the theater in 3D at 60 frames per second. It was filmed at 120 frames per second, but nowhere around here is projecting it that way. The reason I mention any of this is because I watched it the way that it was intended to be seen, and I, I don't get it. I don't know why such a high budget was spent on this arbitrary technical bullshit when it doesn't do much for the experience and the story is fucking trash. The screenplay is all but a lock for the Razzie. It took three guys to write this? Every scene is two people, sometimes sitting, sometimes standing, staring at each other and explaining every possible boring detail of what you're supposed to care about. It's mind-numbing. The only break from the exposition is the occasional mediocre action set piece. When a movie is this stupid and explanatory, it's hard for me to even pay attention. Will Smith is a hitman that was cloned and now his clone is sent to kill him. Imagine where the story's gonna end up. You're right. The twist was even ruined in the trailer. There's nothing to gain from watching the film aside from entertainment, which I was unable to find due to the extreme repetition and abundance of genre cliches. Clive Owen is a large part of the movie, but he has no character. Mary Elizabeth Winstead is a girl, and they wanted to have a female actor. Will Smith lost his charisma a decade ago. The score is default action music. It looks okay in certain scenes where the CGI isn't being overused, and it felt like almost everyone was trying, but the direction is lousy and everything fails because of the script. Two and a half out of ten.